Good afternoon, Sharon, and thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. Oh, hello. It's so lovely to see you again, Jen. Even if we have to do it via Zoom, it's yes. better than not talking at all. I wanted to chat with you as a local artist, educator, and travel guide. I wanted to talk to you today because of a unique project you've launched for mask making. But tell me a little bit, let's go back and talk a little bit about your life before the pandemic. What was it like for you on a typical day as a local artist in our community? Well, um, before the pandemic, I was usually scurrying about taking work to various shows that uh, were being hosted around the county and taking work to the art gallery for their art rental, uh, fielding questions over the phone and visiting. So, and having gallery openings and artist talks and workshops and going to my downtown studio. So it, in some ways it's different, but the actual work itself is a fairly solitary endeavor. So sitting and working and in sort of a meditative state is the artist's life. And for many of us, it hasn't changed a whole lot because this is our life, um, except if you're doing a collaborative effort or an installation or something like that. But it has certainly changed. My, my work is now locked up in various places and it's been sold, but the buyers can't go and get it either. So it's put everybody at a bit of a, a disadvantage here. So, um, yeah, it was just sort of grinding gears a bit until I figured out what what I could do to help out. And so enter the pandemic. What prompted you to take your painting and translate that into mask making? What prompted that? Well, I, I, I used to be, I, I had a business called um, Cybert Fabric Design Studio. So all of this painting on fabric is not new to me. I used to do custom wall hangings for offices and homes in various locations. So uh, the, the concept of painting on fabric is, is not new to me, but I hadn't done it for a number of years. And ironically, I kept buying all kinds of fabric paint and not doing anything with it. And I was stockpiling this fa fabric paint. And when this came along, it all started when um, my daughter, who's the midwife, a frontline worker, mentioned that they didn't have enough protective equipment. So I started to make masks for, for her and, and various other people who needed them. And, uh, and the, ex the material was fairly expensive. So I thought, oh, I have this fabric paint and I have pure cotton. So I started to paint my own designs, never thinking it would turn into this. It was just out of necessity. So that, that's how all of this started. And then I fine tuned the masks from the very beginning because I wanted certain aspects of them that were not offered out there in the, in fact, there were no masks at the time out there in the public. Now it's ubiquitous, but uh, so I posted a few of them. I thought this is kind of fun. And <laughs> people started to want the masks. And I was, I was quite shocked actually, because it was, it was just sort of a fun thing to do. And in, in that way, helping out people too. So it was a win-win. Well, I have mine and I yep. love mine and we do get comments on them when we go out and about. It's like, oh, I love your mask. Where'd you get it? So oh. I'm sure it's hard now to keep up with the demand. It's, it's very difficult. <laughs> and I, I was working till two o'clock in the morning and all day long. And it was because people were waiting and they needed them and they wanted them. Plus doing um, some other commercial fabric ones for people in need. Uh, there were a lot of people who came to me and said, could you 
you know, my husband's going into the hospital. We don't have any protective wear. So, and the stories are really quite amazing. And it's been wonderful contact, being in contact with people because this is an isolated world and it's been, it's been great. Um, and I just hang them in my tree outside or they, they, they come and get them. So it's, it's been a really um, satisfying thing to do. For sure. Now I noticed like a large part of your catalog is inspired by nature that you've always acknowledged the healing power of nature. And so to me, it's no surprise that many of the designs that show up on the masks also echo that sentiment. And so I think in some ways there's a bit of a subconscious messaging vibe in that if we can stay connected to nature, mm -hmm. that we will heal, that we will care for ourselves. Absolutely. Um, one of the organizations that I volunteer with is the Yorklands Green Hub and the old uh, jail grounds, the OR. And very often I go out there with my chair and a tarp and paint out there. So I've been there for the last few days and it's been really wonderful being in nature and absorbing the atmosphere and and doing my work at the same time because it's very portable not like large canvases that i was doing out there before the work you see behind is one of the works from the winter that um that depict the dogwood and uh the various trees out out at your clan so that's one of my my big projects too i love that space and it's wonderful to see the number of people who are out there enjoying it and benefiting from nature so it's a you know when you go out in nature it's it lowers your blood pressure it lowers your cortisol it makes you focus it there are there are so many benefits and art does that too it's been known that after one hour of doing art it lowers your cortisol level and lowers your blood pressure so when you are doing out it, art out in nature it's even better because you get the double benefit. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for doing what you do. If people want more information about your artwork or very specifically your masks, where can they get that? I think they could go on Facebook under Sharon Seibert. I have, although the masks are, the masks are on Facebook, but the, I do have a website for the paintings many of which are done out of your clans. And that's SharonCybert.com. So would you like me to show a couple of the masks while we're? Sure, if you've got them okay. right there handy. Okay, uh, these, aren't, these aren't sewn up yet, but I'll just demonstrate um, some of them. We're talking about the masks, so we should probably <laughs> show some Well, that's of them. just it, I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> So those are, are three. beautiful. Thank you. So thank you again. Please take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll get to do this again in person soon. Oh, I do hope so, Jan. Thanks so very much for this.